All right, fuck it. Let's just kick it. Here we go. Uh, going live Sunday fun day. Fermented grapes of choice. And let's get kicking with some some questions and some bullshit. There's a lot going on in the iMersing world. We had the whole debacle out there that everyone's going crazy about. We had uh, Ryan Bowen proving his vectors were more than the milkman's vectors. We got, uh, who the fuck knows? All kinds of shit going on, I guess. Everyone's going crazy. Daniel Eric, how many 12 ounce curls can you do before passing out? A lot. A lot. I'm a man. Not a ballerina, bro. <laughs> Smigo Mazarenko, will you ever go back to Planet Fitness? You know, I'm a person of, uh, I stick to my guns, so probably not. They done rubbed me wrong too many times, and I'm tired of their hypocritical bullshit. Something that makes me the most crazy in this world is a hypocrite, and I can't take it. And um, I can't take it that we're in a society of everyone's feelings again hurt about everything. People are finding a reason to be upset about something. Yet nobody wants to call Planet Fitness on their bullshit, how they're stereotyping and singling out a group and almost like we should eat it. So Planet Fitness it can, can eat a dick. No, and he actually, Daniel, uh, Eric, fucking, no, I didn't even get any fucking pizza. That's the worst part. I didn't even get no fucking pizza. But they're pumping it to their fatties to make sure they re up their, their membership. Smigo Mazarenko, how many doors do you have in your house? A lot. And it's where I keep people uh, locked up that ask crazy questions because they don't understand construction. Ooh. Oh, hey, what's up, Austin Slater, man? Good to see you on board. Um, Austin Slater, old school grip guy. Been kicking around with this dude for a long time. Uh, he wants to know how long do I train arms? Um, weekly, nothing crazy. Now that there's, a, I'm back to arm wrestling training. My arms are super more sore than I like them to be. So sometimes not even during the week. Once they get conditioned, I'd say, you know, have uh, trained my arms and all the other body parts in like a classical bodybuilder type uh, fashion and train on the table. So let's uh let's let's get into some of the other you know hot button topics. Yeah, a lot of people here talk about uh, Planet of Fitness. The the unfortunate fact of the matter is right is they are a gym giant. They are probably like the biggest chain in North America, as far as I know. I don't know what they're doing worldwide. I don't know who else is out there, but they are seriously uh they're they're big. And the one I go to is is a brand new gym and they've actually got pretty nice equipment except for a bench but i'm not a bencher per se like i could do things with dumbbells or cables i don't like the way a bar makes my shoulders feel so and, and i'm more of a dip guy or rings or push-ups or something like that so um, i'm totally happy with what they've got for equipment and, and it's good enough especially if you're creative and uh diligent in your moves but man fuck them i saw a guy one time at planet fitness this is a true story this kid, you could tell, was the carbon copy opposite of a lunk. The carbon copy opposite. He was the anti-lunk. I mean, he was like pasty and scared and had weights and he was shaking them around. He was all kinds of fucked up. And he dropped the dumbbell, not because he was being a lunk, because he was like blew out his shoulder with like a 25-pound dumbbell overhead press. He was like his, his little small muscle units weren't fucking doing anything. He, like, dropped the dumbbell, and they blew the lunk alarm on him. And this kid was, like, an 18-year-old kid just trying to get into working out. And they horrified him. They horrified him. I'm like, how can you get away with doing that to people? Like, singling them out and, like, embarrassing them and humiliating them. When you can clearly see, uh, it, even if they were dropping weights, like, bro, they're not committing a crime. How can you get off with, like, humiliating and embarrassing people? Like, I would like to have a movement to squash that place. Um, bands versus straight weight for arm wrestling training. You know what I do? Um, I like straight weight because you can gauge it better. Bands feel good. 
bands are nice feel good and they're great from going like zero to beyond your max. So if you want to just keep pulling and pulling and back it away and you want to kind of like bounce on it, like you can like line it up, lock it, and then kind of like get to a point where it bounces, where it goes easy to medium to hard and movable. They're great for that like explosive dynamic type motion. Um, but for me, I like to track a weight. I like to feel something I can put a number on. Okay, so yeah, Lucky Seven. Uh, uh, there's there's two Planet Fitnesses near me, and he says he was going there until they made him wear a mask. And I, I'm about the mask movement. I'm over it at this point in time. I'll get down with it, no problems. But um, yeah, it's a motherfucker. The, the one that I go to doesn't make you if you're in your station. So when you wear it, go from point A to point B, you've got to wear it, or you should. Um, but not while you're working out. But the the other one closer to me actually makes you wear it while you're working out. And I don't know about you guys, but huffing and puffing with the mask on is uh is a bitch. All right, Callie, why on earth would you even go to Planet Fitness, dude? Because um, it's the gym near me. There used to be another really nice gym that was in the area, but then they kind of like sold and the chain sold out and. It got taken over by like racquetballers and pickleballers and Planet Fitness is easy because I have a camp half the year up in Maine. So, and there's a Planet Fitness, like basically because of how much I move around, it makes sense for me to have access to a gym because I can be creative and use anything. I'm like a, like a prison mentality. I'm a prisoner. I can take water jugs and figure out how to make that shit work as long as I have access to water and jugs. Planet Fitness is my water and jug supplier. So I can figure that shit out. I just need something consistent for when I move around if I've got something big coming up. And for 20 bucks a month, not that I sit in the massage chairs, it's just it's 20 bucks. I mean, I I get martinis at fancy places that are more than that. Um, what's your take on the new arm wrestling movie Golden Arm? Uh, I, I started watching some, uh, I think Pradeep did uh, a review on it. But I think I'm not sure. Uh, a little cringy, a little cringy to be honest. <laughs> All right, Bowen beating Milkman. Yeah, I'll talk about that. Um, I talked about it a little bit on on Neils. I think Bowen is. Uh, he looked strong in his setup. He looked strong technically. He looked uh, comfortable on the table. That comes with the amount of hours. He's all. Uh, kind of feed into the things I've said about him in the months past leading up to our match that he's a viable threat because he's comfortable on a table. He's comfortable with himself. He's comfortable with knowing what he's going to do. Um, so he is a good arm wrestler. The problem is um, he doesn't have real gauges of where he really is on the level that he's chasing. And I saw the hand crack. And that hand cracks, boy. Stay in Australia couple more cycles necessary keep spinning brother the senior neil show not best just favorite polls okay love seeing you there awesome lineup guys speaking of presence of greatness who's your favorite of all time favorites not best just favorite polls any class all time um okay so he's asking me my favorite dennis smith is asking my favorite polls of all time Let's say I'll go uh, John Brzezink, Ron Bath. I like watching Engen Terzi. The more I watch him, I like uh, Giannis. Um, I like a lot of like Rustam or Zoloevs. I like those guys. I like watching people that get in there and they do it. They do it strong. They do it right. Uh, a lot of good guys, a lot of good guys that are just cool. Uh, this question is asking me about Dave Chafee. Is he as strong as he was back at 1415 when he won the wall hammer both years? He was not 170 face. Gennady and Rinkus. Dave even said that he could train some days. I don't know what Dave's going on. He's kind of a recluse. He kind of chills. He doesn't do too much. Um... I don't know. I imagine he's strong. I imagine he knows he's going to pal when they open up. I I think he gets overlooked because this world 
and the internet is very unforgiving. And as soon as you lose like once or twice, even if it's circumstantial, the sporting world forgets about you. Remember, I'm from New England. When I was in New England, I'm in New England, and when Tom Brady was here, every single fucking year, the guy threw an interception. They were like, you suck. You're the worst fucking QB ever. You need to get traded. And then as soon as he like wins two, three games in a row, they're like, the go. So the sporting world and the internet world is 110 percent like super bandwagon and dave got forgotten about because he lost a match to devin and michael but he still is probably top five in the world and under different circumstances might be both those guys i mean he's to overlook him is craziness um all right so yeah i want to touch on this bison says what do you think of devin's no training method see that's kind of funny because I have the exact same identical, like he wrote it down, read it off a script, and read it to the camera story with my left hand. Right? I put the effort into my right hand because all the WAL Super Series are right handed. And I don't do anything with my left as far as, like, I'll do general working out. I'll train my body parts equally, but I don't put the emphasis to do it. I don't beat the shit out of it like I beat up my right hand. I don't do specific things. Like, I'll just kind of like fluff this one around. That's it. But my left feels so much more connected. It feels like an arm wrestling machine. It feels like it's so. Be this one is so much stronger, but this one is so much uh, tighter and more complete that I called Devin after that. It was like, I feel like you're writing my story because I go to practice after having a year layoff, and my left is like a goddamn Terminator. And I'm just like, I cannot figure it out. What am I doing wrong? And I'm trying to bounce ideas off him. Like, is this the path? Is the path just to do this? So fuck if I know, but I, does it work? Well, ask his left arm and my left arm. Because this, this, my left arm right now is like Voltron. It's fucking Voltron. Okay, Daniel Urich. How did the TTAL stump flexing turn out? How do I pay for shipping? Beast Woodworker. Yeah, man. So what I had happen was I was I was getting all my stuff going. Um, I do I do so for people who don't know, I do woodworking, I do wood carvings, I do custom things like uh awards, tabletops, but nice stuff, laminated wood, hardwood, tabletops, things that are like heirloom pieces. Um getting that going, but my workspace got a little infiltrated and I got set back and with moving things around and refiguring things out i'm just pushed back a, a couple weeks and my frustration level is the biggest part because i want to take some things that you know got moved and ruined and just karate chop it so i'm just taking a few and we'll be talking about that um and that out to you and your your table and stuff like that but i'm just taking a moment because when my space gets infiltrated it kind of breaks my spirit wesley b what's up bro <laughs> yeah 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 dude you don't go don't wait till 200 likes bro you won't get it for some reason people like to troll my show but they don't thumbs up it. but i'm okay with that because for me this is the same as talking to my wife right i could just talk at her i'll be like you see what all them motherfuckers online were saying I'll, be like, blah, 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 blah. I'll just put you guys on here and make you listen to it she's thankful for it Yes, Grandpa Dale, I do like to work wood, work wood. However you want to play with that angle uh, is the truth. Josiah Cleland, realistically, what do you think a good benchmark for cable wrist curl without a lat drag is? All right, so whenever you're doing a weight like that, it's a lot of things people are touching on. It's how you do it. Uh, the pulley system, the angle it's pulling at, what your handles is very hard to tell. Um, unless I had you here in front of me and we were on the same machine and I saw how you did it, I couldn't assess what a good number is. I will tell you this. There was a point in my life when I never worked out with anything higher than like an 80-pound dumbbell and a wrist curl when guys were doing like 200-pound wrist curls with a dumbbell and their wrists would get folded back like a fucking floppy pancake. Pancakes! Um, no problem, but my wrist never moved. Uh, it's just because of how I moved it and what I did with it. So, um, take it for what it is. It's, it's 
again, it's the old like water jug in prison getting jacked, um, how you use it. Uh, so it's impossible for me to say what's a good number. All right, so hey, RBJ, what kind of beer do you usually drink? Uh, I jump around. Depends on what the season is. I change the seasons. I like Coronas and citrus beers during the summer and heavier stuff coming into the fall and winter. Uh, I like a lot of ciders during you know, almost year round. So I'm I'm universal, dude. I was I was my father gave me the gift of liking a drink, so I don't discriminate. When you come into Maine this year, Rob, um, I basically live in Maine from like the end of April till Halloween. I basically live there because I have my uh, donut cart and lemonade thing going on there. And I'll do that for about six months out of the year. So we're all good, man. Uh, come check me out. You can come get a day pass, pull, eat some donuts. I'll get you drunk. Make you say some stupid shit online you'll regret. And I'll try to convince you to let me post it. <laughs> all right so sam mitchell what is your number one wrist exercise uh well the way what you're doing in practice is good with containment working with guys who aren't only trying to roll you work with guys who will slowly try to roll you out and negative you that is great. Get that slow negative from a containment. And then not once it breaks back, flat. Like, get it to flat and stop. Um, also, some of the handles that I've shown on my other videos, from a star position, treat it like you're lining up, star position, to curling it in. Control it. Back up the start, even a little bit past start. Think of a ref's trying to fuck you over on the grip. A little bit past start, crush it in. Those are my best because you're crushing from a realistic standpoint with a realistic feeling how your hand is open, how your hand holds. That, for me, feels the best on the wrist because it's not just wrist. You know, it's hand, fingers, wrist, palm. It's all in the same. It's it's one. There is no, like, if your wrist is weak and your fingers suck, you're in trouble. If your fingers are great but your wrist sucks, I mean, they all have to be together. I always say it's like a car. you got a 1,000-horsepower uh, motor, but your rear end's blown. What good is it? It's all going to be one unit. RVJ loves hard wood. That's right, Ronan. Hard wood. Oak. Ronan, what vodka do you drink? Well, I'll tell you what the best vodka in the world is. And call, tell me if I'm wrong. Because I know a lot of vodka connoisseurs who are like hardcore great boots, hardcore, you know, lately, uh, what's, the, what's the one that's been big is the... Uh, Fucking one in Texas. Uh, this one is, um, it, it's going to come to me. It, it's, it's Rika. It's like 10 times distilled through like volcanic uh, filters. And it's the smoothest shit ever. It's better than all the other vodkas out there. Rika. Look it up. It's, it's, it's about the same price as some of the other ones. And uh, it's super chill. Yeah, Emac uh, was, just, was touching on me, telling stories about my dad, and they're all true, and they're all super legit, and a uh, hundred stories would be calling it short. You, I got every day of that guy's life is a story. Um, I could make a whole series about telling his stories. I just got to figure out how to clean them up. I mean, guy's a fucking legend. <laughs> yeah. All right. Got a lot of uh, homosexual puns on here. I'm trying to question some of you guys, but that's all right. I mean, my brother-in-law likes dudes too, so maybe I could get you guys talking. All right, so I, I'm guessing this is what I think about uh, Bajan's, Travis's shtick over the week. I don't really have an attachment to it. I didn't even know what was going on. Um, I stay off social media exactly for shit like that. I know if you fuck up on social media, it's like roast city. And it's just the nature of the beast. People are, this 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 world moves so fast 
that if you're a fuck up or you you pull some shade, uh, the people turn on you with the quickness. So that's why I keep it as real as I can, not just for fans, not just for viewership, not for subs. Because there's things I put on YouTube that my wife is cringing at. She's dying, but I'm like, that's me. That's how I talk. That's what I do. She wants to clean shit up and make me like a fucking choir boy, but I'm like, no, I'm real. And that way there, it can never catch up with me. And I, if I stick like that, at least the people I lose, it's just because they don't like me. And that's just the way it's going to be for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 till I'm dead. It is what it is. But if you start playing shticks and people get tired of it, 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 it catches up. Rob, were you offered a chance to be on Game of Arms? Um, no, because at the time I was locked up with UAL. Um, they were the predominant organization at the time. I was locked up. I was talking to some of the guys that were on it. I think it would have been cool. Not for being on TV. I'm not a TV whore. I'm not a person that loves uh, being in the limelight on, in, in that sense of the word. I would like to um, have had something cool like at the Chronicle that put a video for my kids. From an old, fragile, fucking gumming on my my oatmeal type grandpa, there'd be something fun chronicled like, "Hey, my grandpa was on TV and you know was a lunatic." You know that would have been cool for that part. It would have given it some legitimacy. But I was locked up in the only organization at the time. So such is life. I wanted to be on it though. I didn't want to be on it, but I did. It was weird, weird space to be in. Yeah, yeah, Richard Genix. I, I mean, hey, to each their own. I don't, uh, I don't judge. I mean, unless you're a fucking crackhead, then I judge the shit out of you. If you're a crackhead. I'm judging you. We need to all stop that shit with "I don't judge" because everyone judges everybody. That's the point I was making with Planet Fitness. Everyone judges everybody. My mom pulls that shit all the time. She's like, "Hey, I don't judge," but then in her next breath, she'll talk about something like. I don't know, big girl squeezing into some dress she shouldn't be wearing. And uh, I'm like, you just said you don't judge. The fuck are you? I'm talking about you're a hypocrite. Come on, man. Uh, this guy asked me if I ever pulled Tony Katowski. No, we never even, I don't even think I ever grabbed his hand. Mm -mm. No, there's a lot of guys. Ironically, there's a lot of really top arm wrestlers that I've run in circles around. Like, we've been in the same circle, same events. I've never even grabbed a hand. Like, I've sat down with Michael Todd and talked to him a, a whole bunch of times, and I've never even grabbed his hand. How does that even happen? It's usually because when I'm, like, done with the event, I just want to get my, like, after celebration on. I don't even want to think about it no more. I bet eat my guts up all month long thinking about an event. But when it's done, I just want to, like, eat and party. Uh, no, Belvedere, I disagree. Rika, telling you, Belvedere, Rika is better than Belvedere. T it's better than Tito's. I was a Tito's hat. I've converted a lot of people. All right, Rob Virgin Jr. I like this guy because he, he trolled my own name. I like it. How strong is Justin Bishop in your honest opinion? Again, this is one of those questions that's going to be impossible to answer to the mainstream public because you're getting different versions in different time frames of Justin Bishop. Um, the guy I pulled was having a hard time making 205. He was like right there at 204.9 and he had to like get down there. So you're talking maybe somebody coming from 210 compared to the guy we're seeing online now that's like a buck 85. You know, that's what 25 pounds difference. So of meat, I mean, he was showing it in the shoulders, in the back, in the traps. He was thick. So he felt, he felt. Strong like everybody else. He felt on that line of Storm. He felt on that line of uh, Jordan Sill. He felt very, you know, comparable. But this was a guy who was a real deal, made it up, um, came game time ready dude. But I think he was definitely within the conversation of those guys without a doubt. Um, but he's a guy who fluctuates a little bit. And if somebody goes and waxes them tomorrow at 185, that doesn't mean they're in the same running with me because the guy I pulled was 25 pounds bigger and this was the match of his life to get the hammer. So, you know, it, it's like when Muhammad Ali got knocked out by Harry Holmes when he was already at the downside of his career. Don't use that as a defining moment for his 
career. You know what I'm saying? So the guy I pulled was very good. Very, very good. And, and, and Justin, I've always given the nod of whatever weight class he falls into. So if he's 185 now and I put him in a 185 class, he's world level. No doubt about it. Now, people take that world level and want to get it skewed. They want to get it twisted. They want to be like, oh, you're saying he could beat Zolowev? Well, what? You're picking, you're cherry-picking one guy. The world level means if you're, like, let's just say top 20 in the whole world, of all the countries, of all the people in the whole world, if you're one of the very best guys in your country, even to represent your country, of your whole country, you're a world level. Because now you're representing a superpower in the Amherst game, which is North America. So it doesn't matter if you go get blown out by somebody else, some other superstar. It doesn't mean you're not world level. There are guys that are bench warmers at the NBA. They're still the best basketball players you'll ever see in your life. But in the NBA, they might not be even like a starter. But they made it to the NBA. So I think he's legitimate world level at a high level world level in any class he falls into. So it just depends on what his class is at the time. Um, okay, so Mr. McDown Wardo, what's your thoughts on Bowen being number one Australia after the Milkman match? Is he claiming that title? Is that is that the title that's being claimed? As far as I know, his self -pro uh, proclamation is he can't beat uh, Lachlan yet. So I, I I wasn't made aware that he was number one. Um, I mean. It depends on who you ask. If you ask Brian Bowen, he's number one in the world right now. I don't know. I, I uh, Like I said, he looked good. He looked comfortable. Uh, I don't know much about the milkman. And maybe he is the number one guy in, in Australia. I don't have enough data to even talk about that. <laughs> All right. To get strong biceps, what do you suggest? One rep max, sets of three, longer sets? Just lift till you're shredded. Like, I always go heavy. I always try to push the envelope. I, I'm always pushing the envelope. They say, don't max out. Don't max out. My science may be way off and wrong. I'm always maxing. I'm always going heavy. I'm always going to failure. I'm old school meathead where failure is like that mentality of if you're not going to failure, you're not trying. I could be wrong. I could be going against all the things that make you stronger. So, that's just what I do. And I think my biceps are strong. I, I hold up pretty well. Richard Genix, are you trying to find a match now? Yes. So we talked about with Neil Pickup, hopefully a match with one of them European supers that I call my top five. Um, when I say supers, I don't mean super heavyweights. I mean superstars. Guys that are legendary. Guys that are um, have won world titles. Uh, Zlotties. A1. When A1 was kicking around, all the Europeans. Guys that are the poster boys for European excellence. So we'd say like Rustam, Zolowev, um, Sasho is the new one that's not new, but he's the one that's still kicking ass and just beat a rising superstar in Arakli. Um, uh, Prudnik was one of them, but he moved up. He's much bigger now. And Krasimir. So those are like my big five guys, and all of them are super, 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 super legendary. And, and they've won overalls. They've all got wins on some of the best super heavyweights. They've, they've really fucked up the open class at Zlotti. But any one of those guys at any given point in time are like my big five to go to Europe. So what I'm trying to do right now is get a match with uh, Sasho is the most obvious one because he's got steam behind him. He's got the one that's like won every event that's been out there. He's got incredible wins, and he just beat Arakli very convincingly. And I'm trying to get a match with him uh, at uh, the Arnold's for the fall. I'm pushing because I want it. I want one of those defining moments. I want to take back that buzzer shot, the shot at the end of the game where the buzzer's going off and you take it, that Michael Jordan shit that they make a sneaker out of. I want to take one of those shots. I don't want to sit here and pimp around North America. And, and if I got to hear another Europe comment about how we're just subpar, I, I'm going to go crazy. Have you tried peptides? Nope, never tried anything like that. Um, don't even know what they are. You and Krasimir would be good too. Yes, I have huge respect for Krasimir and his career. He's been around a long time, and he's beat some of the very best in the game, including Arsene Liliev and John Brzezink. So let that sink in. When Arsene Liliev was beating Denis Saiplenkov, 
and John Berzink and Travis Bajan. Krazy stonewalled him. And Krazy also beat John Berzink. And he just recently won um, Zlati. So he's one of the overall best ever and pound for pound best ever, without a doubt. He's got wins on some of the very greats. So me pulling Krazy would be, of course, it makes me off balance, makes me scared, makes me nervous. Nobody wants to be put in a position where they're getting a pimp slapped. But what if I don't? Then you beat one of the all-time legends from one of the all-time superpowers who's dominated in Europe. You just expanded your resume. That's like graduating from Harvard and then going to Oxford and getting your degree there, too. Now you just butt-fucked the whole college world. Uh, this guy says, how boring is a Travis Bajan versus Michael Todd matchup? Um, like C-SPAN you have C-SPAN where you are it's like watching that shit you know like watching the stock market prices roll by I think it's an all or nothing match that ends very quickly either way and there's going to be very little heart in it Um, so yeah I think Travis is going to get set up get the straps get everything he needs and he's going for that surge that pin and if it doesn't happen he's not going to invest much in it after that because Michael Todd plays the defensive game, and he's one of the all-time defensive greats. Very contrasting styles. This guy needs everything from zero to one hundred, and if he doesn't get it, it's over. There's no grind. There's no dog fight. There's no nothing. Um, somebody put up there. If I'm going to jump the border and go train with Devin in Canada, that is on my absolute to-do list. I do want to get to training with Devin again. Um, I was talking with Todd Hutchings. Um, I like picking top armors' brains and seeing what their training's like, uh, what they do, what makes them them, and also get somebody with just good overall horsepower. If I was to pull Sasho, Todd Hutchings has uh, experience with Sasho. So I want to pull somebody who's got data on him, what he felt, what he did, and just kind of get that level of raw strength and horsepower because – when you start getting upper in the upper tiers, people that can give you work just on a raw horsepower level start to become like unicorns. You've got to really seek them out. And I'm kind of in that spot right now. John Stone, why won't you pull in WAF? Um, that's a multi-layered question. Um, WAF is... Cali, he did really beat Dennis. It was a straight-up match. He really did. He pinned him. Um, that's just the facts. He actually pinned Dennis. But um, I won't pull in WAF because at first it was like a week-long commitment that fell on a time frame that was very hard for me. And I always said next year, next year, next year. When you're a kid, you don't realize the years roll by. You don't realize time passes you by. And then when I actually started showing interest in having the time to maybe go, and they ended up with all these political splits where if you pull one, you can't pull the other, and it turned into a mess. So, and the other part, really, for me is I like to make a vacation out of my arm wrestling events. I love to make it a vacation that I happen to be arm wrestling at. And if it's a fun location, all the more benefit to me. But a lot of the places they have it, not knocking on any countries as a whole, but they're not the types of places I would want to just kick around for a week at. There have been some. But those are those ones that I kind of like let time pass me by. But as of the past few years, when I've been looking and trying to dial in, going to a world, they weren't at the places that I necessarily want to be kicking around for a week. Um, Bob Lala, thoughts on Matt's pronation video? I didn't see it. I don't, I'll have to check it out. Um, I don't, I'll, I'll check it out and I'll get back to you on that. Uh, Hey, uh, Abram Fer Ferreira. Hey, big fan, long time. Is Gasparini overrated? Um, no, well, like I said before, Gasparini is obviously very good. He's got he, his titles, his resume speak for themselves. He is a, he has got some incredible wins, and I would bet my ass he's an incredible arm wrestler. But um, I think that they're putting a lot of stock. What I do see in Europe is they use a lot of uh, propaganda to try to like stir the pot, you know, they get these guys lifting stupid weights and pulling stupid numbers and doing crazy things. And 
I don't know how much of it's real, um, but Gasparini beating Vitali, that he may be that good. Maybe the level isn't like Vitali's God and Hermes is here. Maybe Hermes is also a God, or maybe they're somewhere in the middle where they kind of met close. Maybe it's just practice. I do put a little stock in practice pulling. I do. Nobody else does. Or a lot. I shouldn't say nobody, but a lot of people don't. I put some stock in practice so that I can see how people move and what pressures they're able to generate. And I know, you know, if they're grabbing fair, but you, gotta look, you, you also got to look at how they're setting up, how they're grabbing, you know, who's hitting, who's initiating. A lot of things there. But if you can, if you can sort out the bullshit, you can kind of grab some data from it. Overrated as far as being like uh, the best guy in the world. Yeah, that's a tough one to put on him. But he's he's good. He's very good. There's no and, and he's growing. He's growing rapidly. He's growing like fucking like miracle grow is in his goddamn tap system that he drinks out of. I mean, these guys over there, it's nothing from the put on forty pounds in a year. Lean. I must have missed something in the chat because people are starting to talk about, I don't know if it's politics or whatever. Eric, why do arm wrestlers wear jeans to the table? I don't know, but if you do the data and you come back to me as an answer, I would love to know. Jeans are like the most uncomfortable thing in the world in reality. And now you got to kind of like split and you look, it makes it honky tonk, right? Don't we look like a bunch of fucking honky tonkers? Like, okay, if, if we, there's a tournament in Texas and you plan on going right from there to your favorite country line dance bar and you don't look like an asshole in wind pants. I mean, okay, I could see going back to your hotel room for two minutes to change into your favorite pair of dungarees is a bitch. I don't know. But in a sporting event, wearing jeans is a sin. You might as well walk into a Catholic church with a fucking 666 tattooed on your forehead. I mean, what are you thinking? If you guys know why that would happen, these are one of the great mysteries of life. Um, Kelly, Dennis crushed Ar uh, Arson in a super match. Yeah, but that doesn't change the fact that it was a legit win. So you're talking different time frames, different days, different set of circumstances. I'm not, a, I'm not disagreeing with that, but it was... This is when you talk about being... Um, like when you want to favor or or pick and choose how you uh, like speculate things. So when one person will get up with an injured arm and take an ass whooping, they go, people say, oh, well, you put your arm up. A result is a result. Well, then that has to be the standard across the board. So whatever the circumstance was on that day with Arson and Dennis, when nobody else was beating Dennis, not really even close, Arson did, in fact, pin him. Regardless. Yes, there's arguments to be made, and yes, in a super match, he did crush him. But Arson was that good that he was beating pretty much everybody, and including the periodic Dennis Iplankov. So, result is result. I mean, love it or leave it. I mean, you can fight it, but I don't know. William McKenna, have I ever pulled Matt Mask? If not, you think you could pull him? I've only pulled, I've only practiced pulled with him one time. I like the way our builds and styles match. Um, I like a person who tries to run through your hand because that's a very comfortable lane for me. So it's a match that I bounced around with WAL. Um, I love Matt Mask as a person and as a an arm wrestler. I'm a I'm a friend and a fan. But the, the, the competitive side of me is very curious on where we play out. They're, the ignorant people will think because he's 60 pounds heavier than me and about five inches taller that he'll just burn over me. But um, I, I think I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Sasquatch, I'm interested in seeing Eric Spoto grow into a force in the big leagues. Yeah, me too. We'll see, though. Um, you can understand for a guy like Eric, I would imagine a limiting factor will be the headspace because it's very hard to be touted as one of the strongest guys of all time 
because of your bench press accolades and to get worldwide notoriety about being strong. And then like Larry wheels is going through and then getting into a stage where you might get blasted and it's going to be a very hard curve to curb your ego when on a different realm of strength, you're regarded as one of the all time greats. And then you go here and you might get smashed because it will happen. Um, Devin is very generous with his compliments and Eric is that strong in his lane. But there are people that are fucking thieves, deniers of getting to a lane. And as the sport improves and people get more information out there, you're going to see that I see so many people practice like, I could beat that motherfucker if I was just right here. It's like, well, no fucking, sh no fucking shit, dude. It's like I could rob a bank if you actually put the money in my trunk and gave me a Ferrari F1 fucking, and, and I could just get on the highway right away. That's not the fucking problem, dude. It's actually getting in the vault, then getting the shit out of there without getting bagged before you get to your Ferrari F1, dummy. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like he is that good um, in his power lanes because he's got a world record level bench press, shoulders, chest, triceps, even an abnormally big forearm and wrist. But there are vulnerabilities there. So I'd be interested to see him do it. I think the ego will be very hard to get it to go from like a number one slot to that fall from grace on a platform where everyone's watching you is tough to deal with. All right, Ronan. Larry is special in the way that he is willing to get, set his pride aside to take his lumps. I hope he does well. Is that really the case, though, or are people doing the playing the humble card? Is it good for viewership? Is it a good look? Is it a good look when somebody plays the <laughs> ass whipped? You're the man, bro. Think about these people who have publicists and everything uh, when they go to like the award shows or post game interviews by high level athletes. They all say the same shit. You know these athletes that play like football, they want to point the finger and blame somebody. Like, that motherfucker can't throw a ball. That motherfucker can't catch a ball. What the fuck was he doing? Well, they're looking at the pigeons when I'm trying to hit them with ass. They want to. But they also then go, we're just going to try harder. We're going to be better. And we're going to just keep practicing. Because the publicist says, like, if you want to shoot yourself in the foot and look like an asshole and look like you're unworkable, you take it on the chin as a team. They don't really fucking believe it. The truth is, is they're, 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 they're coached and people learn through social media that if you're the guy that has nothing but fun, which is why through all the videos, they're laughing their balls off. And I'm like, am I missing the fucking joke? They're laughing so much. And they're like, <laughs> I just got my arm pinned. <laughs> I know when I get pinned, I'm kind of like the fuck I got to figure this shit out. I'm a little bit annoyed. I'm a competitive dude. You can't laugh for an hour straight. I think it's a coach thing that rings to a lot of the viewers that have like, uh, like, like idolistic visions in their eyes of their hero. And they're so cool because they're a big guy willing to take it on the chin. I think that if it was in a dark basement without any cameras on, the laughter would stop. Um, are you familiar with polls from Kazakhstan? Some of them. Tony Katowski is about to pull their number one 75 kilogram puller in a few months. Um, I would like to know what is the weight on that? Um, 75 kilogram is what? 165? Um, that's a tough weight for Tony. He couldn't even make 176 last time I think he pulled Sam. I do like Tony as our uh, flagship lightweight guy if he can get lightweight he does have the tools and he does have the power so he's got he's one of the american guys that actually has the horsepower to go over there and bang in that class um so i don't know enough about who he's pulling and i don't know what the parameters are around it but at that weight it seems very light for him and if he's hitting that light i'm not sure how it translates
<laughs> yeah, Ronan Unleashed, it's true. Um, Ronan touches on people embarrassed of losing in front of their friends. And the problem is now with the internet is everything is streamed, everything is aired, it's all laundry, that's, and it's immortalized. It's put out in the camera. Do you take a loss or have a bad day? Let's say you just show up and you have a bad day. Let's say Ryan Bowen had a bad day against a milkman because he trained. When he made a bad decision, got throttled. Ryan Bowen, that's etched down and that's time stamped. You can go see that video 10 years from now of the day Ryan Bowen got smoked by the milkman. So it's not just in front of your friends. It's in front of the world. And people will pick it apart and use it against you. And then, God forbid, you have an opinion. 10 years from now, somebody will post that video and just use it as a, a response like, how about this time, motherfucker? So it's really tough with the internet up everyone's ass and knowing things. That, I see so many guys will have an opinion like this. They'll be talking. They'll be going for it. And they'll be talking. They'll, they'll, they'll have a real staunch opinion. And then as soon as the camera goes on, the people recording the, the practice or whatever, it's, they change their tune. They start acting like everyone's buddies. And, oh, we're going to just give it the college try here because it's a safe space. Because if you get whipped, it's like I told you I was trying. If you whip it, it's like you're humble because you don't get crazy. The internet has changed people's actions and thoughts on their portrayal. Inside, the demons in here, all the same. People are still dark as a motherfucker, but they portray it in a different way. Oh, Katow's going to pull Talgat. Ah, hey, Ryan Alexander, the pizza man in the fucking house. Ryan Alexander is a great sportsman. I was drunk over to practice one night, and I threw a pizza in his face. And in reality, the whole practice should have fucking jumped me and killed me. But they were gracious enough to let me go and appreciate the fact that I was drunk and aggressive. But I was very apologetic for the last however many years now, and they all uh, forgave me for it. And now they call me the pizza man. So I love that guy. I don't know why he pissed me off. I think he was telling me he was going to kick my ass or something, come after me. So he got a flying pizza to the face. <laughs> uh, I've done a lot of stupid shit, guys. Listen, don't be like me. Take my good advice. Don't take my bad shit. Um, Callie, why are so many arm wrestlers tired of Devin versus Michael Herman? Said that he couldn't even care less about the match. I'm really hyped because the match will decide who was better. I don't know. Maybe it's because uh, they're the two most prominent guys we see online a lot. We see them pulling a lot. We see them in WA all. They're like the flagship guys. If you think about the Columbus ships, the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria, well, they're like the three ships. They're like the two main ships of that fleet that you see a lot of and hear a lot from. And uh, I think the match is predictable. And I think it's from guys we see a lot of. And I think that's probably part of it. I think it's uh, exciting. I'll be watching. But I can understand why somebody would take that stance. Me versus Arthur Makarov or Ingen Terzi. i got to be honest. I think I crushed both of them. I'm too strong. And they're guys who uh, like to dominate a hand. And I don't get dominated through the hand when I'm, especially if I'm working out and in shape. No. It's like the Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones fight. No. Yeah, Schoolboy is a, and you know what? Schoolboy is a great example of an online sensation because he played the humble quiet card. These guys are at over a million subs and they don't even talk on their videos. Think about that when you reach the right audience. When you reach the target audience, they're over a million subs. They're like, I was just looking up fucking, um, oh, Who's the, who's the band? Somebody help me out here. Who's the band that sings down? And, um, oh, 311. I like 311. Some of their music gets me hyped. Some of it's like good for drinking a Corona by the beach. 311's a band that had like top hits, worldwide top hits band. And they've got like 245,000 subs, less than Devin Lyrit, and a fraction of what Alex has, right? And they don't even talk on their videos. They just like show tournaments and training like stone cold Russian and he got big from those New York times videos where he was just a smooth baby face kid hammering people. So, I mean, 
There's a lot of angles you could play it. There's a lot of ways to skin a cat. They sure as fuck found their lane. I've had people ask me about schoolboy that didn't know anything about arm wrestling. Uh, Ronan Unleashed, no, not nice of you to waste a pizza like that. Truth be told, I actually think I peeled the pizza off of after it hit his face, the table, and then bounced onto the floor. I think I actually ate it. That's about where my status was at at that point in time. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Daniel Eric, depending on my status, it doesn't take too much to flip the switch. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, okay, so powerful DDP. He was saying maybe it's because of it's not Michael versus Levon. That mess doesn't excite me either. And I mean, Levon's Levon looks very good, but he also seems very flat to me. He doesn't do it for me. Um, I don't know. The match, Michael's matches are going to be drawn out. They're going to be like the old school. I look at Michael Michael Todd's style is the old school before they put rule limitations on standing up. Um, MMA, like in UFC, when Hoist Gracie and Ken Shamrock fought each other. And they laid down on each other and just, like, hugged each other around the ring. Now, there's no there's nobody saying that they were breaking a rule, and nobody's saying they weren't in an actual cage in an actual fight. But they went to their zone, which was laying on top of each other and hoping somebody make a mistake for, like, a half an hour. And it's a slow bleed. That's how I like in some of those matches. And, you know, that's not me banging on anybody but it, it is and it isn't it's just the fact that those matches don't excite me i've been there for all the jerry cataract matches that were like seven minute polls i've been there for that what would my game plan be if i had a super match first jerry um to not let him get his shoulder too committed keep him off center line that would be my game plan because his shoulder is far stronger than people care to believe it is. Uh, Callie, what's the worst fist fight I've been in or seen? I've had a lot of fucked up encounters, um, but the worst one I've seen was when I was a kid, we had a, a home invasion that my father banged out with about six guys, and it was a bloody, cringing on death fist fight in my front yard that my father almost killed a handful of people. But I saw smashed faces, I saw smashed heads, I saw everything. And it was uh, at 13 years old, it fucked me up. And to be honest with you, uh, I, home invasion is something I still have recurring nightmares about to this day. Mm. With Eddie Hall, I'm not competitive at all. No. No. Matches like that, I show up ready. No. Do you and Travis have real beef or is it just jokes? How many arm wrestlers have Travis really had beef with? I, I wasn't aware that there was anything floating around about me and Travis had beef. Um, we've had our adult disagreements, but nothing more than that. We say how we feel to each other. And uh, how many has he had beefs with? I would say that Tom Nelson is a legit real beef. The rest I can't speak for. Um, that's something you'd have to ask him. Um, when you're an aggressive abrasive, outspoken person in any game, you're going to catch a few people to call your shit and have beef with them. I know I've had mine, and I'm sure he has his. That's a question for him. Um, Chris Gamo, thank you. Rob's not going to ask for Super Chats, guys. Let us show him some love. Keep it up, brother. Hey, I'm here doing my thing. Like I said, talking on camera super easy, but I do appreciate the love and the shout-out. Um, props to you, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the most overrated and underrated pullers. Oh, that's a tough one. 
that's tough because one one match can make an overrated puller superstar, but then their next time out they can shit the bed. Um, it's hard. It's hard to say. Okay. Am I going to do it? You guys want the truth? Can you handle the fucking truth? Overrated. And this isn't saying he's not good. Let's just stop with that bullshit. He's good. But how good in contrast to how good he touts himself and his record and his accolades? Um, Dan Mosier. I mean, he shouts from the rooftops that he's overlooked and he'll kill everybody. When, in fact, I don't think that's the case. And he did, in fact, duck the 95 class at Zlotti when he was, in fact, a full 95 every day of his life. So I say this only because um, I usually don't like to put people on blast. I kind of do. Um, he was kind of made the comment that I docked him. And I gave him every opportunity to pull me. And I think that uh, he rides his resume of certain wins based on how they suit him harder than they should be written. Underrated. Hmm. I would definitely say any of the, anybody from North America because on a world level. We're seen as like Cinderella in that whole family dynamic where, you know, we should be home sweeping up the ashes and Europe is the two fucked up sisters that are going to the ball. So underrated would be any of the top pullers from North America. Open the can of worms. <laughs> okay, so stand to man. How big was your father, and did you ever see him do any impressive feats of strength? Okay, so my father was very built exactly like me. Big upper body, uh, modest legs, um, huge hands, but just like short, smaller version. So instead of like I'm 6'2", he's probably about when he was before he shrunk because he's almost 80 now, like 5'10", 5'11" and probably about 175, 180 pounds. But my father was a top-level boxer in the military. Um, he had articles written about him as a the next up-and-coming like pugilist, a fighter, to watch for in the whole boxing world. He just didn't pursue it much further. He he was in a time where boxers weren't you know making a ton of money. So he, um, he, liked, he was a party guy. He wanted to go and fuck broads, let's be honest. He wanted to go and fuck broads and make money and drink and have a construction company that's it so he um he was very built similar to very similar to me but just not like a, like a little shrunk down version but if you saw him for his build you would take him for a 200 or better pound guy and he was very very powerful i was into amazing feats of strength carrying shingles up ladders uh leveraging hammers uh you know he was very explosive dynamic because of his uh, boxing, but he had the ability to throw a, a right hand like Tommy Hearns. I mean, he could ice. If he got his hands on you, it was over. Super over. Uh, over. <laughs> he was super, I mean, just an incredibly powerful guy. Incredible. To generate that kind of power in that, you know, I won't say that body, 200 pounds in shape is a strong guy. So, is a big guy. Uh, he, was, he was that dude. Okay. Ribsies. Don't want to fuck it up, but thank you so much for the super chat. Um, really appreciate your directness and unapologetic nature. Keep doing you. I'm from Ireland, and your attitude reminds me of people from here. Yes, my kinfolk. My uh, mother's maiden name is Burke, and when I trace back my ancestry all the way up through, um, so Vigent is very common in Canada. I'm Canuck French, but then you find out it goes all the way back up through like Newfoundland and from Scotland. So big heritage from Scotland and Ireland. Um, thank you so much. I am much like your people and I appreciate the words, buddy. <laughs> All right. So Mark Holmeyer, Rob, who's better Cobra or Alan Fisher in your opinion? Um, they flip flopped back and forth and they've both had tremendous wins. I would like to say that in their primes, very, 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 very close. I think Allen was very, very, very close. What I do know is I think Allen maybe had more success against bigger, more globally recognized people. 
like cohort sometimes jump in heavier classes or open classes or overalls and get some more shocking wins. I know that there were times during tournaments that Allen would win, but that's also privy to Cobra's shape. Um, both real, real legends. Um, I think Cobra, in a lot of people's eyes, would get a little nod just because he's had wins on some really big names and big guys and over in Russia and, you know, really tore shit up against guys that Allen might have never gone against. And, Again, it's not that Alan couldn't have had success. It's just that it's like my video, great risk comes great um, reward. Um, he put himself in that lane. I don't know. Oh, guys, thank you. Sweet, sweet Trav and Fart McCass. Fart McCass. I feel like likes to troll me a little bit, but he's a he's a super uh, super chatter and uh, on all the videos. So again, guys, also thank you so much. Makes it worth it. I'm sitting here drinking all my fermented grapes, get my antioxidants in. I heard somebody say that a glass of wine a day will keep the doctor away, but uh, I'm like, why not do it to the tenfold? Why not be ten times healthier than they expect me to be? Right. Um, Hawaii dispenser. Do you think you'd beat Chance Char in a super match? Okay, so let me just put it where my stance is. Because you could basically put it's not Chance Char, you could put any name in there. And in my self belief, I believe if I show up trained and doing what I want to do and what I'm supposed to do and healthy and feeling strong, that I can beat anybody. That's how I honestly feel. And I've had these feelings in the past, and people thought I was crazy. And I've beat guys that people told me I could never, ever be on the table with. I believe I can beat anybody if I'm cut loose like a berserker. Did you ever see the, the fucking um, Beastmaster, the old school Beastmaster, the berserkers that would claw through the walls and go fuck people with the earwig at them and they went crazy? If you guys from the 80s, man, the Beastmaster is one of the all-time greats. Kodo and Photo and Tiger and the witch that crawled up the walls. Yeah, the berserker that was like crawl hammer through the walls i feel like that person when i'm in when i'm ready when i'm here so anybody put in any name there it's not it's not chance job it's anybody i feel i can or i'm definitely in the conversation okay so aram ferrera every rbj how is that armerson team in manchester new hampshire they're growing dude they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and they're um new talent all the time Nice size teams. We got four or five tables running, and you got to wait for your spot to get up there and pull. Um, growth and interest are it's apparent. So if you can get your ass there, you're everyone's welcome. No, I've never pulled Richard Lucas, um, Mizel Jador, RVJ versus Rustam. Yeah, that's a dream match for me because he's one of my big five. He might even be one of my big three. Um, Rustam's career is one of the the, the most storied ever. I think he might even have the record for most wafts gold between left and right hand. Um, you don't need to say much about him. He's beat super heavyweight champions like Trubin when they fall into his lane. And let's not be, let's they, they're not throwing the guy a layup. They're not throwing him a bone. He, they, he puts them in that lane. Uh, Randy R. Thank you so much. Randy R. Just bought me a beer. And uh, says I'm the realest mf -er in the game. I hope so. I try to keep it that way. I try to keep the fluff a little bit, you know, at a minimum. But uh, thank you so much. Get on the sauce and smash Levon. You know, it's something I think about. I think about it. I think about what I could be. But it would cheapen every single thing that I've talked about and done for 17 years. So am I going to be the guy that's going to, so I can be number one in the world or chase that, make everything I've said and stood for up until now invalid. I'm in a fucked up spot, man. If I was 20 years old, I could do it. I could take it on the chin and just be the fucking man. At 40 years old with five kids, too little, too late, dude. I wish. But 
I do think that the best years are coming ahead of me. So who knows where I'll land? What do I think the most beneficial strength for pub arm wrestling, wrist curl strength? I'd have to show you how to pub arm wrestle. I'm a good sit-down arm wrestler. I'd have to show you. I know if you got a good bicep, dudes can't pin you. Just get a wicked strong bicep and sit there like this. They cannot pin you. It never, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> Especially in sit-down. Oh, my God. Okay, Ronan Unleashed. When you come to Maine, let me know. I'll buy you a beer or many. No one pays for drinks when they visit my state. Dude, you're in Maine? I, I live up at Sebago Lake for six months out of the year. I know that's not way up in the sticks, but it's it's Maine. We'll get together, dude. Fart McAss in Russia, 220. I choose Krazy pound for pound. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. He's a great, one of the greats. Hmm. Hmm. Russell is in top three. Europe, Russia, sure. Uh, let's see. Five kids. Damn. <laughs> Keep it in your pants. Dude. I call them New Year's babies, right? I come home like this. Happy New Year. All my kids are born like in the same month. <laughs> do you do pull-ups? Demon Calder? Yes, I do. Um, Brockton Dog. Why are you hating on Levon? I'm not hating on Levon. I just said he's boring. It's not hating. He's just not my dude. John Hurley, thank you for the super chat. Hey, from Newfoundland. Have you pulled Frodo Hogland? If so, how did it go? Also, how many days a week should Armors' training uh, be in rep ranges? Okay, so thank you so much for the super chat. Have I pulled Frodo? No, I have not. Um, much respect for him. Been in a lot of events that he's been at. We've never crossed paths. Um, how many weeks should Armors' training be? So I train on a table once a week. And then the rest of the week, I listen to my body. So I try to show up to practice healthy. So I don't look like a, so I don't fuck up my body dynamics by going to practice unhealthy, trying to compensate. So the, I really have like three of three days after practice that I try to do general movements, but I, I do end up going heavy. I always like heavy. If I can do more than six, I generally bump the weight. They say like eight, if you want to build hy hypertrophy and all this stuff. But for me, if I can do more than five or six, I bump the weight. I like feeling heavy shit. I like feeling it heavy. Yeah, Ronan, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do it. Is Ongar by of natural? Um, all right, I'll just say it. I don't think so. No. Country that's, those things are acceptable. That is their way of life over there. And he's gained a lot of weight, a lot of strength, a lot of size. No. No. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, Randy Robbins, how's the business coming along? It's coming. I'm trying not to rush things. I got too many things going on. And what happens to me when I get shit, um, when I get pissed off, I, uh, don't follow through with shit. So I'll just like, so it's not, won't fall through. I just need to take a break because sometimes when things get fucked up, I just don't. Hayaku Ju, he's a hundred kilogram. That's nothing. Well, yeah, it is nothing, but it depends on where you started. A hundred kilogram is not nothing. That's 220 pounds lean. That's bigger than a good majority of people in the NFL. Also, it depends on where you started. It depends on what grew. So like right now, there are guys that we know of that are, you know, 100 kilograms, but they started at, you know, 70 kilograms. That is a big fucking difference. That is a big deal. So, you know, um, you can't only look at the end result. You got to look at all the data before and in between. I like this one because I talk about it a lot. How much of a difference do you think the thickness of a handle makes for cable training? I feel better using a fatter grip. Not sure if it's genuinely better or not. Okay. 
So a fatter grip will be better when your hand's neutral because it wants to kind of come away on your hand. As soon as you get a bend in your wrist, it's not as beneficial anymore as a small, regular one-inch D-ring handle that you can put right up here in your palm because that D-ring handle is going to keep the pressure right out here at the very end of your palm. You see? When you go like this, it keeps it out there. So now at the very end of your palm, you're going to feel more pressure in your wrist, whereas a thick handle it's here. It wants to roll your fingers, but as soon as you curl it, that hole is going to be somewhere here in the middle of your palm, not putting nearly that much pressure on your wrist. Thick handle, good for rolling, for fingers, and straight wrist strength? Yes. As soon as it gets curled, not even as good as a small ring handle. So if you want to do straight wrist work from a, from a curled position, right there up in the tops of your calluses where your fingers meet your hand, just crunch, crunch. That's my theory, but what do I know? I only played the hand and wrist game long before I got into arm wrestling and nobody cracks my wrist. Go listen to people who want to sling bullshit, who got shitty hands and shitty wrists. That's the other thing, guys. Don't be the person that takes medical advice from the person who watches, uh, binge watches Grey's Anatomy and House and act like they know what the fuck they're talking about because they watch shows. Take it from people who actually have degrees in a resume um there's guys out there spitting advice about how to hook and they got a bullshit hook and they don't know how to hook and they got the weakest arm in the fucking game there's guys out there telling you that you don't need a hand because they don't need a hand there's guys out there so you know you gotta look at who you're taking advice from don't go to you know meet your pen pal in prison and take life advice from him don't <laughs> save yourself the bullshit <laughs> Oh, okay, so Tony will be pulling Shami of left-handed at 176. Quentin Salinas, thank you for the super chat. Tony will be pulling Shami of left-handed at 176. He's super fast, twisting press, not a dive, which I think will go into Tony's power. I am not sure. I don't know enough about Tony's left. I know he's pretty multifaceted. I know he's good. He's ambidextrous, so I'll be watching for it. Um, I know Shami of is, uh, I think he's a world champion, so. Hey, it'll be cool to see. Yeah. RV, uh, RVJ, Devin, Donut Collab getting massive. Um, psh, the donuts are diesel. 30 seconds old when you get them at max. Any fried food when it's that fresh is super diesel. I'm excited to get the season rolling. And as soon as I can, I'm going. I'm going up, going to Canada, guys. Rob, what historical figure would you arm wrestle? George Washington. I heard George, George Washington was so, supposed to be my height, 6'2", and he was storied to have a very imposing frame and could crush an apple with one hand. He was known for his hand strength. Now, I know I would dust him because I'm a seasoned arm wrestler, but he's a guy that would be pretty fucking cool to arm wrestle. Um, yeah. And then Napoleon, just because I know he would go fucking crazy and try to raid my country after I embarrassed him because his short-ass little syndrome would... But he'd probably burn half his country down in a rage of feeling embarrassed. <laughs> Fuck him. And Adolf Hitler. Fucking tear his mustache off. Oh, Mr. Nasty Time. Sounds like a guy who might have more kids than me. Better watch yourself. Thank you for your super chat. <laughs> uh. Is that right? Now, so this this guy Hayaku Ju Mazgan Shami have pinned Oleg Zok Jok on the left. The man is a beast. Well, that's incredible. Um, in that case, Tony's gonna definitely got his hands full. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of you guys got some funny shit to say. Mm. RVJ, how come you have never left the overalls? I think you could do some shit if you both. No, that's that's not necessarily true. I have pulled overalls many a times. I've pulled open classes many a times. Only once we got into leagues where it was obviously easier and thin to hurt a little bit did I sit in a weight class that was natural to me. 
but I've pulled many overalls, won many overalls, won many. I'm the defending multi years running New England, which was a powerful hub of arm wrestling in North America. I was a North America. I've won every super heavyweight event that they've ever had in this state since I've been pulling. So I do it. It's just when there's a league, I do this. But I was actually entertaining the idea of going up in weight just to spin it, just to mix it um, for WAL. Yeah, Ribesies, Burke. Burke. And you see my grandfather on my mother's side. My mother likes to act like she's Portuguese, right? You know, she's watching this. So my sister's watching this. They'll piss their pants. Because for some reason, she identifies with the Portuguese. So my grandmother's Portuguese. My grandfather's Burke. He's Irish. And he's like a true Irishman. And um, my mom's got green eyes and like red hair. And, and and she tries to identify as Portugal. I'm like, Ma, if you walk down the streets of Portugal, you look like a fucking alien. If you walk down the streets of Ireland, you look like one of their kinfolk. <laughs> Stop with your denial. <laughs> I don't know, man. People get crazy when they get older. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. Powerful DDP. Anybody who wants donuts, come see me. I give them to you as much as you can eat. Trust me. I can even teach you how to get in the donut business yourself and be free of the slavery that you're in. That's the, the, the mindset I came into was I'm a slave. And I said, if I can do something for someone, I can do it even better for myself. Get busy working on your own dream. Don't make other people rich. Don't pay for someone else's fucking mortgage. Don't pay for someone else's car payments and someone else's vacations and all the work you're putting in. They, they, you think they're doing you a favor by putting you to work. Guess what? No, you're not. they're not doing you a favor by giving you a job because without you, they don't get paid either. You're actually making them the lion's share. You're actually doing the essential, hunting down the fucking zebra and letting them come over and eat. And then you get to come over and chew on the hoof when they're gone. Be an entrepreneur. Fall up and give it a run and make your life something. It's not that hard. I Believe me, I've lived in the fucking shitsville, but I've always been a go-getter. All right, Mr. Nasty Time. I like your name, though, dude, because it, it makes me feel weird. Probably a newbie question. I just started. Thank you for your super chat. Anyone with super chats, thank you. Probably a newbie question, but I just started arm wrestling, and I have been having issues through the week training. After my team pulls on Saturdays, my arms are dead. Advice on going about the week. It's the it's the newbie. Um, it's like the bends, right? You you're gonna go through those aches and pains, but I, I think that maybe you gotta be careful who you're training with. If people are just hammering you, it will hurt you more. Um, you gotta be very careful with who you train with and how you train. That will stress out your bones, your tendons, your muscles, even give you tears. Um, look into one of those massage guns that Giannis talks about a lot. Um, they have cheaper versions now. You can get it on Amazon or at like a sporting good place. They do work. They work incredible. Uh, muscle rubs, ibuprofen, turmeric, things that take down inflammation, sit in a hot tub, hot bath. All those things work. Um, guys talk about doing very lightweight, high repetition, things with rubber bands. Wherever you're hurt, work that area, fill it with blood. But the soreness is going to happen. You're in a, you're in a, you're in a sport that is going to tear you up. Um, Bill Baker, thank you very much for your super chat. Um, feel free to ask a question. Questions on you, bro. But thank you. Yeah, Josiah Cleland. I know those types. Those uh, gypsy gypsy boxers. That's 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 cut from that cloth, dude. Okay, Mike M., thank you for the super chat. Glad to hear your wrist is getting better. Guys, wrist work is something that is a labor of love. It's like growing a garden. If you sit there and wait for the plant to sprout and give you a tomato, they're going to be fucking shithouse. It takes time, and you got to just let it cultivate and, 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 and grow roots and sprout up, and eventually, before you know it, you're giving tomatoes away. But if you sit there and watch the tomatoes to grow, you're going to get super frustrated and super depressed and, and super, like, I'm moving on. Wrist work, hand work, these types of work take time. But once they're there, they're going to be able to feed a whole village. 
Okay, powerful DDP. Come see me and we'll talk to you about getting you in the donut business because that's exactly what I did. I have Reinhardt syndrome in my hands and feet. So anything that I work outside that's lower than like 50 degrees, I suffer. Uh, and I realized like I got to do something else. And I was a, a born blue collar. I came out of my mama's womb with an actual hammer and a tape measure. I was the first kid the doctor ever seen. He saw it come out like swinging a hammer and carrying shingles. Cool like that, right? Who would make the best armrest and equivalent of Dana White? Um, Robert Drank was that. Um, I'm pretty sure that Robert Drank was the armrest and Dana White. Um, uh, Dana White represents a lot of different facets. Right? I don't know enough about him. Uh, yeah, powerful DDP. Uh, your hands legit turn orange and my feet go white, white. Yeah, my my fingertips will go as white as this wall behind me, and like they're dying, like dead, scary dead. And the next level is like black, which is frostbite. And I gotta run them into hot water, and they like hurt, like crippling hurt. So you gotta figure something else out because as you get older, it gets worse, which is what happened to me. So, hey, okay, sada sada, donuts, man. People love them; they eat them, they're cheap. You never go like a foot off the ground. You're in the trailer. With my JBL stereo system fucking cracking, playing music, giving people lemonades, hydrating them, and they love me for it. Mike M, dude, in the near future, I'd like to talk to you about getting one of your custom tabletops, the high-end woodworking stuff. Okay, so what I'm doing is I got a couple projects in the works right now that I want to put at least a couple out and um, kind of show it on video like an example. And then kind of like launch maybe a website or something. My sister collabs with me and she does amazing stuff. So she's got like a laser that can like wood burn and wood carve. I do the carpentry side, which is like laminating different wood species to create a pattern, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, parquet or different species of wood with colors or just laminating it like a butcher block and carving deep into it with like a design. You know, I can go, we can do anything with with wood i know you guys are gonna spin that however you want all you fucking dirty minded people but it's exciting it's just a matter of me getting back on track with it since i had a little setback all right let's see where we at where we at right, got you let's see Oh, yeah, you're a barn builder. I like that. Ryan Odds is fucking miserable. It really is, dude. It's crippling. It's crippling. I've had all the best boots, the best gloves, the best socks, the best battery-heated things. Dude, I've had it all. Okay, so Bill Baker, apologies. has been asked a thousand times, 10,000 times. Do you think they'll ever pull the European attorneys in the future? Yes, that is on the docket this year. Me and Neil Pickup are trying to make it happen where I get one of the European superstars to pull. At the Arnold's in the UK. I want to go to the UK. I'm a Harry Potter nerd. I want to go see the Harry Potter sites. I want to go see London. I want to go to fucking Ireland and drink at some pub that's in a, a side of a, a, a mountain that's like an old school with the wooden keg still. I want to go tour like that piece of Europe and go there for like, a, like two weeks and go to the uh, Arnold's in the UK and pull whoever they can throw at me. So, yeah. That's it's not in the future. It's my goal. Move to Florida. <laughs> if I didn't have custody issues with my oldest daughter, so my oldest daughter is um, I would have moved around a million places by now, but I have custody issues with my oldest daughter and I get her every weekend, but she's like two states away get her every weekend and um she goes to school in connecticut and then in the summer we have 50 50 um if it wasn't for that i'd have been gone a long time ago such is life <laughs> i'm not a pothead it says harry potter nerd never figured you for a pothead now nah, man i just i don't know i like the wonder of it all it's magical to me i'm in a lot of ways, I'm still a little kid. I use my kids as an excuse to watch some movies when 
they fall asleep. I, I watch the movie through and through, like, so intrigued. <laughs> Scott G's channel, react to my 100-pound hammer curl videos. I'm stronger than you. Um, all right, well, send them to me, and we'll figure that out. I know everyone on the internet. If I go on the internet, I'm bottom 1% of strength. When I get in front of people in person, um, that percentage goes in reverse. <laughs> Randy Robbins, you got to give it a chance, bro. Give the Harry Potter a chance. It's good shit. It really is. It's a nice little storyline. It's good, clean shit, man. Oh, okay. You respect it. You're just looking for Netflix and chill, bro. That's why, you know what the problem is? You're trying to get laid and you're putting on movies the girls actually want to watch. So when you're like Netflix and chilling, they really just want Netflix and some popcorn. You're going to put on some bullshit movie like fucking... Oh, what's the movie that I thought was the worst movie ever? I don't know. There's probably some real garbage movies out there. Like, how does he even make it? And you put that on, so then you get the chill part out of it. See? Don't put good movies on for Netflix. Chill, dude. Life advice. Put shit movies on. <laughs> Favorite beer? Depends on the time of year. I think I talked about that. All right, so Benjamin McCabe, how many push push-ups? And pull-ups can you do in a row if you wanted to? At one time, I broke the record for what the current record was for pull-ups in a minute. I contacted Guinness Book, but they told me it would take them a year and a half to come see me. So at the time, the record pull-ups in a minute at the time for full length was um, 57 or 59. And in my apartment, I was regularly doing over 60. I had a two-by-four hanging across like a loft. And I would just go by and bang out sets of like 40. And I did like oh, 65. I could do pretty pretty regularly. And I contacted Guinness Book just because like anything, I wanted to just see my name chronicled in a book when I'm an old man. And they told me they couldn't get to me. So right now, how many could I do? I don't, I don't do a lot of pull-ups, but I, I'd say when I fuck around, I can do probably 30. I don't know. Push-ups. I don't know, 75. It's more like a, an endurance thing at that point in time than it is like a strength thing. You start to like lactic out. I'm a fast twitch guy, so I uh, I burn out faster than those guys who do like a 1,000 or can't bench press 200. When you're preparing for a big super match or high level tournament, do you include diet in your prep? Mike M. That's a great question. Um, yeah, before I do that, Kurt Carbine, body weight for 60 pull ups. Yeah, I did 65 in a minute multiple times because I wanted to make sure I could do it and break the record full range. Um, and that was kind of like, was, I'd imagine with Dennis Book there filming and shit, you'd be a little more torqued up. Um, um, what was the one I was just going to? Diet is something I'm looking into right now. So right now, it's Sunday fun day. But moving into Monday, I'm, I'm going to diet. Like, not diet, but like clean it up the act a lot. And I want to get back to a real lean place and real athletic place that obviously I never thought would get away from me. But when you get old enough and you do enough time of sitting on the couch playing video games and you can do enough time of doing nothing, it doesn't matter what your genetics are. Life will catch up with you, and I just feel like I want to be more fit. Um, so diet's going to be a part of it, and coming into this match, if I get one with, like, Krazy or Sasho, I want to be the biggest version I can be at that weight because of my leanness. My leanness will play to the weight, so that will be the one. Milwaukee or DeWalt tools. Um, for drills, I have um, DeWalt. Um, Milwaukee, I like for their, like, they make the best saws all. So I have a bunch of different things. I have some Makitas. I have some Milwaukee. I have some DeWalt. I, I think they have their own um, best of each category. Yeah, see, so Mike, he, Mike referenced... Um, Mike referenced the thing about genetics and talking about hands and stuff. Um, 
But that people say, oh, arm wrestling is all hand and wrist. But what if you don't have an arm to go with it? What happens if you get all that control and you don't have the arm, shoulder, anything to go with it? Someone that will say like Todd Hutchings version can just push right through you. So it's there is no one thing that's everything. They're all one big chain. Like Rover Red Rover. You ever play Rover Red Rover when you're a kid and you hold clasp hands and you let people try to burst through you? Rover Red Rover, the weakest link will fuck the chain. Okay, so Randy Robbins is curious. I've heard from multiple pros that you guys rest for a week before a big match. What does that look like, a week of rest? All right, so I'll usually do two weeks because I tear the shit out of my body coming up to it, and it looks pretty much like doing nothing for me. And if I'm sore, I'll try to, like, soak in a tub or a hot tub or something. But, like, time off means time off. It means I don't – I try to stay away from shit because inevitably it's like – uh you know, you get dragged down the rabbit hole because then you start getting insecure. If you get near weights and pants, you start getting insecure about how you feel because you start feeling loose from doing nothing. And then you'll start pulling a little harder and doing things and you're not doing yourself any services by fucking around. Snap on tools. Yeah, man, those are serious money, though. And. Uh, oh, they're definitely nice. Definitely nice. Uh, steak or ribs? How about both? Why can't I have both? I got a Traeger grill, and the more I fuck around with it, the more I realize the best food I've ever eaten comes right off that grill. I am a mother fucking Traeger smoking. I would be welcome with open arms in any southern Kansas City, Texas, Louisiana barbecue pit. They'd be like, motherfucker, respect. I take my barbecuing and and protein cooking very seriously. Yes, I still have the UAL belt. <laughs> Are piano hands bad for arm wrestling? I mean, unless they're if they're dainty, they they're not. I, I don't know. Like piano as in long, that's good. There is no hand bad for arm wrestling unless it's weak. Yeah, what are piano hands? I mean, you could sit in the background and play like entry music, and as the match heats up, you can make dramatic fucking -na 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 -na, like like a, like make a score for as the match goes. Anyone in mind? Yes, Mike. I'm talking about Science Show Andreev or maybe Krasimir. Or one of those guys over in Europe. That's mostly the what I'm looking at. Stephen Grant, do you train any type of cardio and prep for a match? E no. Um, my cardio usually comes on a table because I want to have long grinding endurance on the table. But lately, I'm as I'm trying to lean out and thin out and get back to a physicality I'm happy with. Um, uh, just real heavy incline treadmill walking. Yeah, it sucks. Fucking cardio is the devil. <laughs> yeah, I'm a vegan. Um, let's see. All right, so we got some guys that know how to cook. Brad Nailers fucking blow. They blow off. They're too dainty. Scott G is apparently a beast. Got huge forearms and kills everyone in his town, and he, is, he made the great ape his bitch. Imagine that. Good on you, Scott G. Strong motherfucker. Is Khaled Natty? If you've got a friend, if you know a guy that hangs out with a group of guys and they all smoke crack, and they're all criminals, but you don't know about that one guy that hangs out with all those guys. What's the chances he doesn't smoke crack and he doesn't do crime? Do you fear PED users can really tip the scale? They've been tipping the scale since the dawn of PEDs. They've been tipping the scale. Yeah, 
a fear. It's happening around me every day. We've seen it in even most recent matches. Are you PED users just trying to get to where natural strong arm muscles are at? Yeah. But then it goes beyond that, I guess, to where they're at and then beyond. Is Todd Zilli your antichrist? Are you looking forward to getting even with him? At one point in time, um, he was. Um, but I know I'm in a better place physically than I was. It's been almost five years. And uh, I think he's moved on and I've moved on. But I'd be curious to just, even without any animosity or angst as competitors, just pull him. Um, I feel that I'm much different than the person he could assess because the angles that I, I couldn't apply pressure and I can now. <laughs> uh, you guys are roasting. <laughs> All right. How many injuries have I gotten over the years from arm wrestling? Um, I don't know. Um, I know that the most significant one was hurting my. Uh, I tore my rotator cuff, and uh, that's the one that sent me back the most. And that took a long time to heal. But because I'm a blue-collar fucking loser, and I never had insurance, and I thought I'd never get old and never get injured, and, you know, that song, Forever Young, was playing in my mind all day, every day, until I wasn't forever young, and I wasn't forever invincible. And uh, my shoulder got fucked up, and I'd say that was the worst for me because it had the most setbacks. There are ones that hurt, but I seem to rebound pretty quickly. Um, that one, that one was was rugged. Never broke a bone, never broke an arm or a finger or anything like that. But hey, a sports. You do any sport for right now? You got guys creeping the sport that make uh, some of these baseball career guys that play for twenty years look like garbage because they're doing it for forty years of destruction on their body. So. You're not going to do anything that long and not have some repercussions. I mean, fuck. I mean, you do anything repetitively for that long, your body is going to like adapt and like morph and you're going to almost like cripple yourself in another way. Huh. Me versus our, me versus Colette in the grip comp. That's interesting because I was doing all the stuff that Colette's doing now. Um, but my hand, I, I've specialized in a different way. You know, the theory of the grip is just gripping as hard as you can to get a dumbbell off the floor. And, you know, you usually crack your wrist back to neutral to grab it like me, like an eagle claw, like a dumbbell or when I pinched, it was all neutral wrist. Now I do things in like a positive wrist. So my hand is stronger in arm wrestling sense. But through the years, probably got weaker in a grip competition. So in an armor success, my hand is much stronger. In grip competition, I don't entertain that anymore. So I don't know how that would fall. I would assume that he may have a little bit more, even though my dynamometer numbers are still off the charts. And I can still close a big gripper. But if you want me to flat hand contain somebody, that's different. Hey, have I seen Dana McWhite? Thank you so much for your super chat. You see Blue Balls struggle in that match? Yeah, I did. It was very indicative to me. And I'm sure he'll say he was tired and whatnot, and that's fine. But, you know, I got enough information out of that. I mean, considering he's a super-duper XL heavyweight, um, I saw a lot. Richard Genix, do you take any daily supplements? No. I'll wake up in the morning and I'll drink a, like a vinegar and lemon drink with cayenne pepper and big water to get the day started, like 32 ounces, and I just eat food from there. That's it, man. Uh, what kind of wristwatch do I wear? I don't. Because if I want the time, I look at my phone. I walk like a fucking ape carrying luggage under his armpit so i scraped that thing all over the place and it annoys me and my wrist gets sweaty and there was a point in time i got a nice watch down in a room but my wife got for me i thought it looked cool like it was a cool fucking fashion accessory that i could wear at my you know blousey shirt blown in the wind like i was some fucking aruba 
sexy vacation video and it, it, it blew it made, like how does a wrist sweat but my wrist would sweat and i feel like i knocked it off everywhere it was all those big stupid like rapper watch videos or some fucking thing and it sucked it blew i hated it i loved it it was a nice watch but i didn't like wearing it i don't wear i don't wear wrist watch rolex for sure there you go, dude. You're kicking it hard. Did I ever smoke cigs regularly? Oh, man, I tried anything once or twice. I never smoked crack, but I've tried cigs. Um, yeah, I was a party time person. Whatever's clever, dude. Do I go to Aruba often? No, only one time, but not enough. What's boring, Richard Jennix? What the fuck do you want to know? Ask it. Ask the question, and I will answer it. You will not come on here and be bored. You will come here and get truth. Hurtful truth. Rob, what is the secret to a happy marriage? Hmm. Finding the right chick. So many guys are so quick to settle down with like uh, a piece of ass or the way someone looks. You got to see how you vibe with someone on a personality level. And that sounds fucking stupid, but it's true. Because when you get tired of looking at each other and fucking each other, you got to really deal with those conversations and enjoy being around each other. Because if you're just with somebody that, you know, you think is hot, and then after a year or two, they're not even hot to you anymore. You like want to punch their face. Let me tell you something. You need to like the person, not just be like lusting over the person. So your selection, it's like getting a good book, like a book about a topic you want to read about. Don't get a book because it's got a fancy cover and some like, cool like uh, text and something that drew you in for a second. But then the, the meat of the book you're not even really interested in because you're not going to read it through you're going to skim the pages and put it down find the right person it's a bitch the dating world is fucking ugly but find the right person that's the key favorite place for a burger you know i still uh, oh i like bobby's bobby flay's place for burgers i just had a ridiculous one of the best places in my life to get a burger was one of guy fieri's joints at the uh foxwoods casino and I like, um, I still like, uh, what's the burger joint with the big, the big fucking burgers? Some of the commercial joints are good. Five Guys is all right. But Bobby's Burger, Bob, Bobby Flay's Burger Place and uh, the other one at the casino was real good. How did I get into arm wrestling? It's part of my culture and my life. I tell the story many times. It's me. I am arm wrestling. <laughs> Can I train on live so we could follow? At some point in time, I'm going to put some trainings out there. Fuddruckers. Thank you, Mike. Sometimes I swear my fucking mind goes numb. Um, yes, Fuddruckers. One pound burger. And a shake. That shit is actually good. I like to eat my burgers um, basically as rare as I can get them. Just like black and blue, like seared on both sides. Um, so to find a place that will cook it is another one. Hold on. I got to get my wife to bring up a fucking wine. So give me some wine. Before I... it's... All right. Oh, I feel like you could have played Mark Wahlberg part in the movie The Departed. Hey. I'll take that. We're only like uh, where we grew up was only like 15, 20 minutes from each other. So maybe if they ever make a movie about me, I'll let Mark Wahlberg play it. But he's got to pack on a little bit of meat and stand on some milk crates if he's filming me. Because I'm not going to be portrayed as a short motherfucker. Only Ryan Bowen seems to get off with calling me short. But I'm not short. Johnny Rockets is all right. <laughs> All right, Richard Jennings, he wants to get into the dirty shit. Did you ever do 
and, and any drugs or drink a lot or hang out with the wrong people or shit like that growing up? Or were you always a good boy like mommy's boy? Dude, if, if that, yes, I did all those things, a lot of them. I was never a, 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 a drug consumer, like heavy. I was like the party type, like Studio 54 type. And um, I would experiment, but I never got hooked on anything. I was a drinker. Um, and I put my mother through the woodwork. I, she's had to come bail me out. She's had to drive me around after I lost my license and bring me to probations and everything. I was a mommy's boy. But I put that woman through hell. I had a wild streak that is probably just recently. I don't even know if it's fizzled out. I get triggered on here and I feel like that wild streak is relit. <laughs> Do I train my arms every day? I, mm, yeah, by carrying around my baby. That's about it. <laughs> yes, yes. I think big boy. I don't know enough about big boy. How many drinks you have in you now? Uh, this would be like my third wine, but it's like a mason jar, so maybe like a 16 ounce. So I don't know, two bottles. And I get delivery service. When you're good, when you're a badass motherfucker, thank you, darling. Yeah. See, I call it Sunday Fun Day, and this is part of being the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Monday isn't shit. Monday might as well be Saturday. I do my shit when I got to do it. And when I want to have fun, I have my fun. See? Sell donuts. When you say, okay, I like this fun because people talk about this and it annoys me. And wouldn't you say having a genetic advantage is unfair for normal people and PDs are leveling the playing field? Well, that's like saying, um, you know what sport is probably the most genetically driven out of all the sports? Basketball. One of the biggest sports in North America, even the world. Basketball, you could be a stud basketball player. And if you're like six foot, if you're like six foot, nobody will even really look at you. You'll get some looks if you're a real raging beast. But if you're like seven foot tall, you could suck and everyone's eyes are on you. If you're the same skill level, but just happen to be four inches taller, one guy's getting drafted by everyone. The other guy's fucking sitting on the sidelines. Does that mean for genetic height, we like lower the hoop or, you know, change the dynamics? It is what it is, dude. It's called some people are more suited for certain things. Same Bolt is like five inches taller than all the guys he races against. Is that unfair? No. God made him a running machine. That's good for him. Doesn't mean that, well, I got to take drugs now to catch them. I know you guys are going to say all sprinters are on drugs. I get it. But the truth is, is like he was just made better. That's how he came out of his mama's womb. He is the specimen. Cheating him of being that specimen by taking an absurd amount of drugs and catching him cheapens just how awesome he really fucking is. Scott G is a bad motherfucker. Scott G, you are a bad dude. If, I can't wait for you to come train with me so I can give you all the free donuts and wine and lemonade and take pictures with you. <laughs> Randy Robbins. I'm with you on that one. Okay. Or while I get thrown off of YouTube, I might trigger 164 people watching me right now. <laughs> I know what Massachusetts. Do you know what I talk like? Dude. Uh, do I think that Devin can get 300 kilograms eating your donuts? Yeah, of course he can. I can get anyone up there. But my donuts are light. They're not as heavy as yeast donuts. My airplane panic attack story. Dark days. Dark days. Mm. There's some good ones. Mm. How many donuts can I hold with no hands? I have mini donuts, but they're about as fat. 
So I can't put any on there, but eight. If I can break anyone's on this planet, who's it going to be? Whoever's jarring at me at the moment. I don't have any hatred towards anyone right now. I've already plugged my piece about the people that trolled me and pissed me off. Um. <laughs> Why do I, okay, so Yawn Infinite, can you pull Bone to sell it once and for all and show him a person? You're not the 5'5 five five like he thinks. The funny thing is, is this fucking guy sits there and says we were in the same room, and he gets a good sense of me. Like he's using his data. He sat across from me at a dinner table sitting down like this, sitting down like this, eating a salad with my brother and my, my wife on the other side. And, like, I wasn't over there, like, standing tall and, like, flexing. I didn't realize he was, like, terminated, analyzing everybody. And in, he's saying, like, you get a good sense of when you're in the room with someone. It's like, at that same tournament, the guy, he took his hand and struggled with and even lost it with the flopperist. I blasted the fuck out of, like, my easiest match in the whole tournament series. So, I don't know what he's thinking and what the thought process with that is, but we all know that there's some... Um, I would like to see the world through his eyes for a day. You know, walk a mile in Indians' moccasins. I would love to see it. Someone was saying I was 5'7 the other day. It made me wonder. Bro, my waist is 5'7. I'm built like a, like an African. I've got, like, the way my proportions are is weird. i got extra long legs and a short torso. So my legs are, like, my hip to leg ratio is probably, like, somebody who's, like, Six five, and my forearms are like if I go like this, my elbow to fingertip is probably the same as like I know it's the same as Nanostads, who's like six eight, same as like Devin, same as Matt Mask. Um, I have certain cursors on my body that you know, like a hole in my ear and my keloid, all scars that, that like raise up, and everyone, it's things that are only prevalent in black people, and you know, I got like five cursors that are like. I'm a white black guy. Now I'm going to get sad about something. <laughs> I sound like a Neanderthal. Close to it. How large is my head? I don't know. Probably pretty big, considering when I put a hat on, it never seems to fit right. So uh, to put all this information inside there, it has to be sizable. So, I mean, think about it. When you buy a computer, do you buy the thing that's got like two gigs or like two gigabytes of RAM? I don't even know if I got that right. I'm not a computer nerd, but you get where I'm going with this, right? Have I broken someone's arm? Yeah, man, I did it during a picture op one time, like a photo op. The only time I broke someone's arm, I didn't break it. They broke it on me. Like a guy was asking me if he could pull me. It was a, it was an amateur. We were at a Pennsylvania tournament and we were outside and it was chill, super chill. And I was like, can I pull you? And I was like, sure. And I was just kind of like holding like this. And he was kind of like close to the pin line. He was going for it. And I was just like, kind of just like holding him. And it was like a photo op type thing. Someone was talking to me, asking me a picture. And I just kind of like sat back on it for a second to just kind of like, just kind of give him a little pressure. And it went, crack. that was it. And I felt so terrible about it. Never seen the guy again. It was one of Storm's buddies, but I felt so bad about it. I ne it never had that happen to me, but he basically was so committed to trying to get that pin. He like turned away from his arm that as soon as I gave him any pressure, even the littlest, shit just snapped. It was super weird. Yeah, Randy Robbins, I think I think you're pretty pretty much accurate. <laughs> Sam Mitchell, um you can, but it depends on the setting, I guess. Um I don't know if it would go over good in like Detroit or Atlanta. Maybe at practice, I think I get away with it. 
Oh, three, three Don, Donimus. Always had a bad impression from seeing your matches about your attitude. Glad to know that you you better through the videos. Yeah, you know why though? Because uh, everyone thinks I'm an asshole in my videos because I scream and yell, but they think it's like uh, some act to disrespect my opponent. They don't realize that that's a an act of insecurity, like coming forth, right? Um, yeah, Jay Don, we talked about the Travis prank re uh, recently, but we didn't really get into it. Um, I don't know what to make of it. I don't. It, it's the internet, so it's like believe half of what you see or half of what you nothing of what you hear. But like on the internet, it's even worse. It's like believe nothing. And um, you know, all those little publicity stunts that they did that people got soured about. I don't have much of an opinion on it. Um, I don't know the inner workings of people who super chatted or had investment in it or whatever, but it's not my, I don't know nothing about that whole venture. It's not my gig. Thank you, John Fernandez. Uh, Robert Kelly, yes, I do pull local tournaments periodically, and when I do, I'll either check the landscape and pull multiple classes, or I'll... Um, pull heavyweights or whatever. I pull local tournaments when they had like the New England championships all the time. Kurt Carbine, that is 100% correct. The WOL website says you're 6'2". I am in fact on the nose 6'1 and 3 quarters in my barefoot socks on a doctor's scale. It's true. You, all you got to do is look at me standing next to guys like Jordan Sill and Storm is like a six-footer. And when you see us approaching the table and stuff, you'll see that I'm not full of shit like me and uh, uh, Jordan Sill and me and uh, Justin Bishop. Just compare heights as we like stand at the table where our hips are, where we move our shoulders. And you'll see that I actually am. Uh, yeah. It's, if you don't want to call me 6'2", I'm a very strong 6'1 plus. Did I ever bowl 300? Yeah, on the Wii, Wii Sports, I could do that shit all day. There was a time that I was just sitting at home playing Wii, bowling 300 on demand. I was a Wii world legend. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Bowen's um, fucking Goliath from the Bible. Johnny B, are any of your kids into arm wrestling? All of them. And the two oldest are my two girls, and they're excellent, 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 excellent. My daughter has a video that went viral, which was invited to be on the Ellen DeGeneres show and all that stuff. And uh, her hand and wrist and strength is incomprehensible for someone her age. She's amazing. John Hutchinson, Hutch Hutchison, thanks for the advice the other day. Beat a guy who was much larger than me, four to one, instead of losing two, three, or one point. Awesome. Open them up easily instead of falling into a trap. Work great for a little press at the end. Thanks. Hey, man. Glad it worked out for you. Um, yeah. Anytime I can help. I don't mind helping. I don't want to hold people down. I don't want to. Uh, I'm open. It's just like I'm an open book. Just read me. Eddie Hall and Thor are going to win the fight. It's going to depend on who trains for boxing and who knows what they should do based on each other's attributes. I think Thor is going to have a harder time punching down. I think Eddie getting in. If I was to train Eddie, I would tell him to work that liver and kidney shot. That's all you're going to need with that big, long torso. Hit the body snatcher shot and drop that motherfucker. Because that long torso that's going to be a foot over you, you come in and, and, and hit that midsection. Everyone equates boxing to headhunting. Let me tell you something. You hit a hard liver, kidney shot, and people's legs will go out. They will go down. Be a body snatcher. And he's got the, he's got that torquey, tight, compact frame. He could body snatch him, and Thor will not even be able to stand. He'll be pissing blood for fucking two weeks. 
what's you versus Marcio look like? I would love to try it again because I pulled Marcio off the couch and Marcio has said in the past that he wasn't the best version of himself. So I'd love to pull him now. Marcio, without a doubt, was one of the all-time greats, even giving guys a run and beating guys that are among the all-time greats in Europe on his off days. Um, he's one of the guys that beat John Berzink in his prime, beat Travis in his prime. So Marcio is one of the all-time. Even when Coach Carr was around, he went toe-to-toe, center of the table, where the match fouled out at a time when Push Car was just smashing motherfuckers. I'd love to pull Marcio again, but I have huge respect for him and I consider him a friend. And uh, yeah, we're both in a better place now. Powerful DDP. Trust me, when we open up camp, I'd love for you guys to come visit me. Anyone within a drive, you're all welcome. Thank you for the super chat. Everyone's welcome. Oh, well, see, that changes things. Thor got the liver shot down, training with Bass, Root, and, you know, now now you're talking um, who's going to have access to best technical um, advices. So that's that's a different game. You know, if they're not going in there lumping, if they're actually getting proper fight training, if he, if he can use his range. The problem with weightlifters is, is they don't have the – elasticity they don't have that like that 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 shoulder separation that can make acceleration it can snap it can pop that's why guys that don't look as big but when you get a guy that's big and powerful they can snap it they can shoulder separate um will they become one of those or will they be lugging like bench press punching each other i don't know um props to both of them for even giving it a run um but if he's got Boss Rootin as a trainer, then he's on a hell of a path. That's right. Uh, yep, Demon Todd Boss is a bad dude. Yeah, yeah. Eddie has the pop, but does he? He kind of muscles into a punch. He doesn't really like, like he can't throw a one inch punch. He can't like, bang. he can't like, he can't separate like, pop. he can't, he like, chest rows people like, like rock and sock and robot. We didn't start the fire. That's a great song. I bet you can't sing that thing in karaoke though. That's like the hardest karaoke song ever. Okay, so check it out, guys. Um, I'm going to do about five more minutes because you guys got questions rolling in, and then I'm going to cut it um, because I'm going to do this every week anyways. I love sitting here like this. All right, thinking of first guys, would go in five rounds. Round one's a mystery, but as soon as I smell blood in the water, as soon as I taste it, as soon as I find that lane, I win every round after that, every single round after that. I just need to get the first round. Once I get the first round, every round after that, I own and I will get around. Can you Kings move, Rob? I don't know. I don't even try it. I don't even entertain it. Um, it's not my lane. It's not my game. My father told me a thing about never say never. So I won't say never, but I will. But certain things I won't do, and it's just not my cup of tea. That's fine. You know, like I said, I got a, a brother-in-law who's gay. He likes dudes. Goes to a club and looks at a dude with tight jeans on and looks at his buns and thinks, ooh, I got to get me some of that. I can honestly say that will never be my lane. I mean, that's your lane. That's cool, bro. High five. Hope you score that guy with them hot buns. You know, it's not my game. I don't have to judge you. I don't have to hate on you. But I can honestly say that it's not my game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't have to be full of hatred, but I can honestly say, like, People say never say never. I could say no. I will never look at that dude with them tight buns and want to <laughs> ride it. <laughs> Just not my game. <laughs> Who am I hunting right now? Russians, I guess. Oh, Scott G. I can't wait to see you, dude. 
Um, yes, I've used the exploding hand technique. It's one of my things. No, Richard Genix, I did not. If I'm still making sense and making my stories come back around to square one, I'm right on point, brother. So, guys, check it out. Listen, all you guys have been super chill, super fun and engaging. Um, I like this type of uh, banter. I like this type of, uh, yeah, I've had the exploding ass technique. That's nothing that I even tried to work for. That shit has got the better of me, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you guys, uh, it, it's been cool. I enjoy this. I enjoy talking on wrestling, even life. Uh, whatever and as i imagine that this goes on week to week you'll see the rhythm of what i'm all about and kind of the show what makes me a little different than the other shows that you know there's no filter there's no nothing that can't be done or asked I, criminal past or you know techniques on how to use your pinky finger you know in illicit ways or in arm wrestling whatever you guys want to get into so we'll get down with that and um you know it'll it will cultivate it and grow from there but, you know, hats off to all the Super Chat. Hats off to all the people that are engaged. And, uh, you know, really, really appreciate you tuning in and staying with me this long. And we'll just keep kicking it. You know, I'm trying to do Wednesdays for the people that are over on the European side. Wednesdays are in the days. And Sundays for, you know, whoever's catching this time zone. So hit me up with, with uh, questions on uh, Instagram or through the wife. You guys all know the situation by now. And uh, we'll try to get to them as best we can. So, again, hats off to everybody. Sincere thanks. And uh, I'm going to chat real soon. Peace out.